nine seven. I know your court. Mr. Brisbane's apartment. Just a minute, please. I'm trying to get Mr. Brisbane's apartment. There seems to be something wrong. If you'll wait a few minutes, I'll run up there and see. I'm sorry, but nobody answered. Mr. Brisbane's apartment. I was up there and rang his bell. I would have called you sooner, but uh, I've been trying to get Mr. Brisbane, the superintendent on the wire, to report to him first. Where's the body? Uh, in the basement. I'll show you. Night witch. I wonder who wrote it and what does it mean? I wonder. That tall Negro did this. He will try to lay it on the night. Tall Negro. He will try to lay it on the night. What can it mean? I am tall, but why they... No, no. They couldn't be trying to lay this on me. I don't know anything about it except find the body. I was... That'll do, son. Come to the dead. We're taking you with us. Come on. What's the charge? See this one, Sarge. This man is night watchman down the chemical plant where the girl was murdered. We didn't like the way he acted, so we brought him in. Oh, the chemical murder, eh? I should say it is serious. You better put this fellow in the cell by himself. But of course, I'll have to book him regularly. What kind of a dame? White? I guess I better see the captain about this thing. Hold everything I find out what the captain says about it. Looks like you're in a tough spot, buddy. But all I know about it is finding the body. That may be true. But the trouble is getting these peckerwoods to believe it when they hear about it. The best thing, as I see it, is to slip you out of town for safekeeping before they find out about it. The captain says to put this fellow on 395 until he has a chance to talk to him. Name? Jones. Good morning, madam. What do you want? To ask you a question. Ask me a question? What do you mean? The question is, are you fond of reading? Fond of reading? Well, I never. Say, what are you trying to get at anyhow? Because if you are, I have just what you want to be reading. This is it. A fine new novel by a Negro author. Of course, everyone is ordering a copy. And why shouldn't they? A wake like this by one of our group is something to order. Of course, you're going to order a copy also. So what's the name, please? Hold on now. You're working too fast. Oh, am I? I'm sorry. 
Well, I ain't never said I won't take one. What's this old book all about anyhow? One of the sweetest love stories ever told. And oh yes, just a minute. There's a girl across the street who'll buy one. She's a great reader. Oh yes? Sure. I see her with a book in her hand all the time. That's fine. Come over here. I'll show you where she lives. That's the house over there. See? Oh yes. That's fine. Okay, and thanks. I'll go right over. You're beautiful when you smile, so uh, keep on smiling. Flatterer. Goodbye. See you Saturday. Uh, good day. once more, Mama. Ah, uh, come on, Daddy. Shake a leg. You know how crazy I am about reading, and I just borrowed it. And I'm reading it, see? Yeah, but kiss me once more, baby. Ah, uh, be on your way. <laughs> I'm going to a movie when I get through, so don't look for me back until late. All right, dear. But don't stay out too late and then be afraid to come home in the dark. <laughs> Try to get back in time for dinner. <laughs> Who's afraid of the big bad wolf? All right, Mommy. Bye-bye. Goodbye, dear. Pardon, miss, but a friend of yours sent me to see you. Oh, indeed. What friend? A lady friend. Across the street. A lady friend of mine across the street? Who can that be? Yes, she said you were a great reader, and I'm selling a fine new novel by a Negro author. Everybody is buying it and reading it. I want to show it to you and take your order. What's this? A picture of the author? Looks a little like you, but of course it isn't. Writers from what I've read about them would be too conceited on one hand, and then too stupid on the other to go out and sell their own books to make a living. I agree with you. It looks like it might be interesting at that, and I am a great reader. Then you'll take one? Oh, yes. If for no other reason than because it's by a colored author. Very kind and considerate of you. And then, please? Oh, but wait a minute. What's the price? Two dollars. Okay. The name is Vance. Claudia Vance. Miss or Mrs.? Oh, Miss. Is it okay to deliver Saturday? Sure. Any time after five o'clock. Well, that's fine. Uh, Saturday, then. Saturday. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, uh, by the way, the girl you told me to go and see across the street, she bought a copy of the book, all right. Thanks to you for sending me to her. I'm glad. A rather pretty girl. What does she do? What's the matter? That's a question I'd rather not answer. Oh, pardon me. But she seemed quite nice. I saw her mother, too. The cat birdie. <laughs> The cat bird? What do you mean? Mother. That's a sort of nickname over there. All the girls call her mother. I guess I don't understand. When you deliver the book, you'll probably find out for yourself. Good day. <laughs> Oh, it's 
the gentleman with the book. Come in. Thank you. Have a seat. This is the gentleman, Mother, that I ordered the book from. Uh, do you mind showing it to her? This is my mother, Mr... Uh... Glory. Glory? That's it. Glory is my name. Henry Glory. Oh. My, but it's attractive. And you say it's by a colored author? What's his name? I forgot to get his name myself. Um... Uh, Here's his picture. Maybe his name is under it. He has an intelligent face. But there's no name here either. The author's name isn't there because the book is published anonymously. Oh, I see. Well, at least it looks like it might be interesting. How much did you say it was, dear? Oh, yes, two dollars. Will you get it, Mother, please? Surely. You wrote this book, didn't you? Of course you did. I recognize you, in spite of the mustache you were wearing when you had the picture taken. You are, Mr. Glory. Thank you. Well, I'm going to read it first, dear. So here goes. Excuse me. Have you any more deliveries to make tonight? That was the last one. I'm glad. Uh, then if you don't mind, uh, won't you sit down? I'd like to talk to you. Thank you. Sure. Why did you publish the book anonymously? You're a persistent little person, aren't you? I haven't admitted that I wrote it. Oh, but you did. And I bet you have some valid reason for publishing it anonymously. Tell me, please. I'll tell you. We belong to a not very appreciative group when it comes to any achievement by each other, especially if they are privileged to meet that person ordinarily. Yes? If many of the so-called dicta people, whom I must sell, thought I wrote the book, they wouldn't read it with an open mind. I see. Of course, they're not all that way. But, uh... It costs money to publish it. And if they don't know you wrote it, you can sell it and go about your business without being... Cross-examined. That's it exactly. In the meantime, I'm studying law, and the money I make from the sale of the book provides me with the means to do so. And that's the story. Interesting. Now, speaking of law, have you considered how and where you will practice? After you've finished, of course. Yes, right here in this town. Well, my reason for asking you is, uh, I visited in Washington last summer, which has no end of colored professional men. Most of whom are starving, in a way, of course. Oh, on the contrary, no. By no means. In fact, most of them get along very well. Is that so? I've always held just the opposite impression. There's no industry in Washington to employ our group in the usual way, and... Uh... Oh, this is another story entirely. Very simple, too. They married themselves a school teacher, who, as you have perhaps heard, are well paid and. <laughs> <laughs> so if you find it hard to get along here, remember there's some nice little school teacher in Washington who will be very glad to make it very easy for you. <laughs> They say down there that all a man has to be is a doctor or a lawyer, and he doesn't necessarily have to have any practice at all. <laughs> I'm awfully glad to have met you, and I've certainly enjoyed myself. Good night. Good night. Thank <laughs> you.
I was just passing and thought I'd stop in. I'm glad you did. Come on in. Have a seat. Thank you. I've been reading your book, Mr. Glory, Henry Glory. Just think of the Lord when you see me and you recall my name. <laughs> That's funny. But I've forgotten yours, too. I can understand that you would, because I have the most peculiar one you ever heard of. Really? A most unusual name. I like odd and peculiar names. What is yours? Trying to read the book. It's interesting. Very interesting. It reads like a true story. Well, how are you doing? Not bad at all. Selling quite a few books. I'm glad. And oh, by the way, did the girl across the street take her book? Oh, sure. The same night I delivered yours. That's nice. Funny situation, that. What situation? The girl across the street from you. Oh. She seems about one of the nicest persons I've ever met. <laughs> well, I'm glad you think so. I can't understand your point of view, but I can mine. I'm in love with her. Oh, Mr. Glory, no. Yes, I am. Not only in love with her, but madly. Well, I never. And I'm just foolish enough to believe that she's equally in love with me. And I guess this seems more foolish still. I'm going to call on her tonight and tell her that I love her. And then go out of her life forever. And you insist on doing this foolish thing? Yes tonight. You've got the address, so everything's okay. At 8.30 tonight, where lights are low. Get me? Okay. Won't be long now, so let's get ready. Claudia. Oh, Mother! You frightened me. Darling, you're in love. Why, Mother. Yes, with the young man who sold you the book. I'm surprised to hear you talk like that. Oh, I was a girl not so long ago. There's nothing to be ashamed of. There, there. Baby. Mother's baby. Don't cry. I... I just can't help it, Mother. But he's a stranger, dear. Possibly a married man. Oh, no. He's not married, Mother. How do you know? Did you ask him? Well, I simply know he isn't. He's a strange and unusual man with a definite objective. But he's not married. Oh, Mother. Through the window, look. It's Mr. Glory. Here he comes now. Rush rear door quick, you know. He's coming. 
coming to see me. Oh, Mother, what will I do? I'm so happy. Go to your room, darling, and put on a dress and fix yourself up. I'll entertain him until you return. You're the sweetest mother in all the world. Will you hurry, dear? He's starting in now. Hurry. Did you hear that? Hear what? That noise in the hallway sounded like a body falling to the floor. Oh, you must be mistaken. Uh, where is Miss... Seven dollars. Hell. Wrong man. Damn. A Negro. No wonder we didn't get nothing. A jay. The devil. All right, stupid. Negro or old fay, get him out of here. Well, people, did you see that mother? That bunch of crooks next door? Maybe they've pulled a murder this time. I've told Papa repeatedly to report them to the police. But, Claudia... But nothing, Mother. I wouldn't be surprised to hear that they've just blackjacked and robbed Mr. Glory with him coming here to see me. I... You had to be late, of course. Yeah. While you sock a poor jigwalk on the bean and get chicken feed for your trouble. Some trigger man, you. <laughs> oh, rats.
Be seated. Thanks. Miss Vance, uh, is it still? Three years have passed since I uh, sold you the book. I... This chemical factory matter, a night watchman they hold in, does that happen to be your... My brother. That's bad. I'm sorry. Well, uh, can I serve you? I'm a lawyer now. So I see. I was looking for a lawyer. I didn't exactly catch the name on the door. I've been practicing close to two years now. That's fine. I hope you are succeeding. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, you see, my brother is in serious trouble. Uh, I, uh, we should have a, an experienced lawyer. You understand what I'm trying to say, don't you? I both understand and appreciate your position. Well, uh, While I feel perfectly capable of handling your brother's case, that is, uh, if you want me to. Of course, we want a lawyer, a good lawyer. Exactly. If I find the case getting away from me, I would gladly call in more experienced counsel. Uh, well, that clarifies the matter. Then uh, I wish to retain you. Thank you. Now for some of the facts in the case. I don't know anything. I haven't even seen my brother. I know he didn't commit the crime, and they've taken him away for safekeeping. He's not even in the city. That's right. I know where they've taken him, so we'll go out and see him the first thing tomorrow morning. All I know about it is finding the body. Well, tell me all about that. What was the exact hour, if you recall it? It was just after midnight. I, uh... That's but... right. The murder, however, has been known to have been committed at least 12 hours before. The point is, where were you at that time, say, between 1 and 2 p.m.? At the factory. I had been asked by Mr. Brisbane, the superintendent, to be there at that time. Oh, by Mr. Brisbane. Then you were at the factory about the time the murder was committed. Well, that puts you closer to it. When you got to the factory, was Mr. Brisbane there? Yes, he was there when I arrived. Oh. Now, that's better. We're getting somewhere. Was he still there when you left, or did you leave first? Tell me about that, too. Yes, he was there when I arrived, and I left him there. Well, I'm here, Mr. Brisbane. So I see. But you do early, Arthur. i tell you what you do. You go home and get some more sleep, see? But I'm not sleeping, Mr. Brisbane. Oh, I... yes, you are. I can see it in your eyes. You need some more rest. Now, you go home and get it. And then get up and come back here at 6 o'clock. Just as you say, Mr. Brisbane. Be sure and be back at 6 o'clock, Arthur. Okay, Mr. Brisbane, 6 o'clock. Was there anyone else present when you had this conversation with Mr. Brisbane? No, there was no one else present. Well, they're holding the preliminary tomorrow morning. I'll be on hand, and so will Brisbane and the other watchmen. Until then, don't talk. Understand? I understand. Now tell the court in your own words, Mr. Brisbane, just what happened, as far as you know, in connection with this affair last Saturday afternoon. Well, it was around noon. Uh, good morning, Mr. Brisbane. Good morning. What can I do for you? I've come for my pay. The name, please. 
Myrtle Stanfield. Here you are. Myrtle Stanfield. A dollar and a half. Thank you. Uh, pardon me, but have the new chemicals come? I don't know. May I go back and see? Certainly. Thank you. You? What are you doing here now? Why, uh, I left a pair of shoes in the chemical room the other day. May I go back and get them? Yes. Yeah. You may get them. And that's the last time I saw the girl or the watchman until today. You're with us. No questions, Your Honor. Good heavens, he's trying to lay that on me. Why, well, I never even saw the girl that afternoon. Obviously. But be calm. Meantime, they'd indict anybody on that testimony. At the trial, it'll be different. All right, Arthur. Let's go. It's really serious now, isn't it? Yes, it is serious now. What is your name? Sarah Stanfield. Were you acquainted with the deceased Myrtle Stanfield? She was my daughter. Do you recall? Uh... I do. Then uh, tell the court in your own words just what passed between you and your, uh, your daughter, where she went, and what time she came home on Saturday afternoon, May 26th. It must have been around... No. No, Mr. Brisbane wouldn't give it to me. That's funny. You've gotten it before. What new rule is this all of a sudden? You just wouldn't give it to me. Said you'd have to comfort yourself. Well, I can certainly do that. It ain't but a dollar and a half, but I need it, so I'll go for it myself. Be careful, darling. Hurry back to Mother, dear Mommy. It was around six o'clock when George came back. Where's Myrtle? I thought she had the factory to get her money. Hasn't she been back? Why, no. Well, she promised to stop by and speak to Mom on her way back. She didn't. And Mom was a bit worried, so she sent me over here to see what happened. I never saw her alive again when... Brisbane is lying. 
but has built up a perfect alibi. I wonder why. Because he killed Myrtle Stanfield. Maybe. But why? What was his motive? That's what we've got to find out. I have an idea. Brisbane not only committed the crime, but somebody knows he did. I don't follow you. Well, if somebody didn't know about it, he wouldn't be trying to put it on my brother. He would have no reason to. Sit down. In court today, and every day, I've noticed an exchange of glances between Brisbane and a certain individual. That'll be all, Mr. Brisbane. Stay away from liquor and keep your mouth shut. <laughs> then uh, you'll be here tomorrow night. I'm giving my usual big Saturday night show, you know. Uh, I promised my girl that I wasn't going to stay out late tonight and drink that I was going... Oh, you should worry about her. I'll have some dames here tomorrow night that'll make you ashamed of her. So be here tomorrow night for a good time. You only live once, you know. Well, all right. I'll be here. Well, I hooked him. We can't let a good fish like that get off our hook. Well, I should say not, with him handling plenty money. Well, we don't have to think about that. Our business is to continue to take it away from him. You're telling me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, 
tired, but you're looking hot this evening. Let's see if I can find a table for you. You look like a million dollars. If I had time, I'd uh, make a play for you myself. Oh, say not so, Mama. Say not so. Call me anything you like, sweet papa. Just so long as you call me in time for the next drink. <laughs> I was going to suggest drink. Uh, what do you like? Well, as I told you before, I'm out for a big time tonight. And the sky's the limit. I'm drinking nothing but straight whiskey. <laughs> Honey, we is living on the same side of the street. Because I was ratchet, ready, and waiting with a good plan of corn right on the hip. But you don't have to keep it there any longer. <laughs> Out she comes. Uh, something for a chase? Ginger ale. Uh, you did that. Oh, well, yeah, there. Dark man. Bring that ugly mug of yours over here. Looking at me for you, Parker. Eh? Take the ladies off. Say, wait a minute. You'd like to keep on looking out of them eyes there, you want, wouldn't you? Well, get busy and take the ladies off and be quick about it. Ginger ale, please. Oh, 
say. What do you think about this trial? I guess this fellow Van killed the girl, all right. No, no, he, he, he don't know nothing about it. Oh, I don't know. I think he does. No, the poor jig is just being real. He don't know nothing about it so. Well, it sure looks bad for him. Well, then, uh, what about this freezer thing? Uh, I know a whole lot about him, too. A whole lot. But I ain't gonna tell. I ain't going to care. Uh, give me another little drink, darling. Uh, yeah. If I want it, why should I? I'm getting plenty of money to keep my mouth good. Why should I want it? Sure. Why should you worry? Well, I mean, look, that ain't all. Mr. Bisbee won't give me a whole lot of more money when the trial is over. He's going to send me away. He's a good man, too. I was... I was here to see you. It's all for me. I was... I was... Thank for getting somewhere. It was your intuition that put those two where they belong. With Hawkins under arrest, I'm going to grill the life out of him. And if I understand the heritage of our race, I'll make him talk. I'll make him talk. If you don't know who killed Myrtle Stanfield, then why did you tell Miss Claudia Vance at the Midnight Club that you knew who did do it? Yes, you said it. You were drunk when you said it. And you were intoxicated when you told her that Mr. Brisbane was going to give you plenty of money when the trial was over and send you away. <laughs> but you said it because you knew who killed Myrtle Stanfield and you were being paid to keep your mouth shut. <laughs> I met Mr. Brisbane at the, at the entrance of the factory, and he uh, was, it, uh, it said, Good morning, Mr. Brisbane. 
Remember the little girl I was telling you about? Sure, boss. Pretty little mama, too, eh, yeah, Mr. Ridgeway? <laughs> well, I fixed everything. Yeah? Yeah. I refused to give a boy that she sent for a pay yesterday the money. That'll make her have to come for it herself today. Get me? <laughs> sure, sure, boss. Sure. Well... The old stool at the foot of the stairs and watch. Yes, Mr. Bisbane. <laughs> she was a good white man. Hot dog. Have the new chemicals come? I don't know. I'll go back and see.
see that little girl that came up here a while ago? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, I done seen one come up here, and she done come back down. And then I seen uh, uh, another one come up, but she ain't come back down yet. Well, the one who didn't come back down came into my office and then went into the stock room where I followed her. I, I wanted to make love to the little girl, but she refused me. We got to scuffling, and she got her fingers in my face and eyes, and I, I had to hit her to make her turn loose. I... I don't know how hard I hit her, but she she fell down and hit herself against something and got hurt. I don't know how bad she's hurt, but I want you to go back there and bring her here so we can put her somewhere. Hurry up, Lem. Hurry up. There's money in it for you. Yes. Oh, oh, Lord. Lord. You. Oh, 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 somebody should hear you. Oh, but she's dead. Mr. Brisbane, I want to go home. I want to go oh, home. Will you shut your damn mouth and come on and help me pull oh, somewhere? Well, Mr. Brisbane, she's dead. And the white folks want to lynch me sure when they hear about this. They want to lynch me sure. Oh, but no, Mr. Brisbane, I can't on. go. Man, I ain't going. I don't want to go down there, Mr. Brisbane. Come on, Mr. Brisbane. Oh, Mr. Brisbane. And after we took her body, down in the basement. Then we come back upstairs and uh, uh, where Mr. Brisbane, he dictated them notes to me. And he told me to, to, to read on that piece of paper, which... down what I say. Oh, Lord, I, I, I sure wish this hadn't happened. Huh? Oh, such a big mouth and listen to me. Yeah. All right, now. He tell me, lay down like night witch. Uh, like, like what, Miss Brisbane? Like a night witch, you fool. Oh. Put a T in which. Oh. It's too bad that's not an indelible pencil. You'd keep it out of your mouth after the first time. Uh, says which? Here, give me the note. You never understand. All right, now. Take another one. Take another? Another what? I mean, write another note, dumbbell. Oh, write another note, dumbbell. Now, uh, write down what I say, and don't say anything else with your mouth. That tall Negro did this. He will try to lay it on the night. He will try to lay it on the night. I understand. Tonight, that's me. You mean he will try to lay it on me? I understand it all now. I got it now. 
Mr. Brisbane, see if I You did it, but you want them to think that Vance did. And these notes will make them think that Vance did. But Vance, he trying to make them think that I did. Of course, you know, I didn't. And you won't let them rest me. But Vance, he be here tonight. And if he finds her and calls the police, they gonna arrest him and maybe lynch him quick. Then they ain't gonna never find out who killed her. I understand. Yeah, you understand's too damn much. Here. Rub that A out in Negro and make it E. It, it seemed to me that, that you ain't spelling it like they calls it no how. There should be an I instead of an E, and there should be two G's instead of one. Here's $250, which I am giving to you. Take it. It's yours. I've given it to you. Thank you, Mr. Brisbane. Thank you. Wait here. Be back in a minute. That white man's got something up his sleeve. He ain't getting me all this here money for nothing. Anyway, I'm gonna try to get away with it. But uh, I can just make it to them steps. I'm gonna run. I'm gonna run so fast till Raph Metcalf can't catch me. Uh-oh, here he comes back. Well, uh, if uh, if that's all, uh, Miss Miss Bain, uh, can can I go now? Yeah. By the way, Lem. Mm-mm. Yes, Mr. Brisbane. Before you go, I want you to go down in the basement and take a lot of trash and burn that bundle we left down there. You, you mean, uh, oh, Lord, Lord, Mr. Brisbane, I can't, I can't. You can't, eh? <laughs> no. Let me see that money. Oh. Mm-hmm. Is that the way you do business? Somebody's gonna hang for that job. Why should it be me? I've got wealthy people in Boston. <laughs> but what about me? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you going away to Boston and leave me down here with all this trouble? <laughs> no, no, I wish I could. <laughs> Say, for crying out loud, who in the devil wants to listen to you carrying on like that? You go do what I say, they mightn't ever, maybe, find out what happened. What you want to do now, Mr. Bisbane? 
I'm thinking of a way to settle this thing. I'm going to call the police station. You... you want to what? Call the police station and tell them that a girl, a white girl, has been murdered in the factory and that I'm holding a colored man until they arrive. Oh, please, Mr. Brisbane, please don't, Mr. Brisbane. You know what will happen. Mr. Brisbane, please, please don't call the police. I'm going to call the police station. This thing will soon be settled. Oh, Mr. Brisbane, please, I'll go, buddy. I'll go do anything you ask us, but please don't call them police. Mr. Brisbane, you can't explain nothing to them. Please, sir, please don't call. Get up. Yes. So, you ready to go down there and do what I say, eh? Yes, only. Only, only what? Only you come and go with me. Well, there's no need of my going down there. Yes, Miss Brisbane, but you's a rich man, and to keep you from calling the, the, the police, I'll go do it. But uh, you've got to come and go with me, because I ain't going down there by myself. I've been thinking that it would be best for you to go across the street and get a bite to eat and then come back and do the job. Now, don't go over there and get drunk and forget to come back. I want you back here in uh, 40 minutes. You understand? 40 minutes or... I, I understand, Mr. Brisbane. Forty minutes. I'll be back in forty minutes. Ah! Boy, did you hear about the dice game they had up to the social club last night? Yeah. <laughs> well, old Bill Johnson up there that for one thing, I shot four dollars and five cents. See what I mean? Passed two times. You know he tried to take some of my money. Man, I went out there and bought me a ball that and come in and turn that joint out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Uh, Pretty good stuff, too, man. You know that? I keep count of them, see? Put them on my tab, you know. You, you collect sand. All right. Yeah, yeah, man, I like this kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, good luck, too. Another thing. I won't tell you a funny thing that happened oh, here, Stacey. Right. <laughs> Listen, lies. I'm going back here in the back room, lay down on the cot and get me some sleep. Uh, wake me up in uh, in uh, 20 minutes. I want to go back over there to Mr. Brisbane. <laughs> I'll wake you up in 40 minutes. <laughs> And uh, I didn't uh, see Mr. Brisbane no more then till the following Monday morning at the plant. And, and National Chemical Laboratories. Mr. Brisbane speaking. District Attorney, if there's anything I can do to help you, uh, just call on me. Be only too glad to do it. All right. Goodbye.
keep your mouth shut. If you'd come back Saturday and done what I told you to do with it, all this uproar wouldn't be going on now. They've arrested Vance for it. And if you keep your big mouth shut, I may be able to place it on him. Jean, lunch. to the office in 10 minutes. Now, here's $25. Twice a week, I'm giving that much to you, but only on condition that you stay sober and keep your mouth shut. I thought they'd lynch Vance, and this whole thing would have been over by now, but he's got a smart lawyer, and we may have trouble. The main thing is to make it appear as if Vance did it long enough to slip you away. The trouble with you and all Negroes is that the minute you see a policeman, you get scared and spill your guts. Not me, Mr. Brisbane. I know how to keep my mouth shut. Well, whether you do or not, you'd better. Now run along. But remember, come to see me daily. Yes. This is Mr. Glory, Neil. I want you to tell him everything you told me about Epps on the way up here. Oh, he's been grouchy ever since his girl got killed. What do you mean, his girl? What girl? Myrtle Stanfield. Myrtle Stanfield? Sure. They had a fuss the day she was killed. He's a bad guy, that kid. He reads tough books about gangsters and killers. And they say when he gets big, he's going to raid the penitentiary where they has them two kids that ki killed that boy a long time ago and free him. Let me see. What's their names? I know who you're talking about. You do? Well, them's the guys. He's, he has a book that reads all about them. And he said that they ought to be free. And when he grows up, he's going to free him. Well, I didn't know Epps was that kind of a boy. I wonder if you could take us to his house. Sure. He lives on the same street with me. I just can take you down there now. That'll be fine. We'll go right along with you. Who's that? Friend. Who are you? What do you want? We've been sent to see you. Sent to see me? See me for what? If you'll permit us to enter, I'll tell you. You... You ain't the law? No, we're not the law. Well, I don't know nothing about it. The boy was on the stand and told all he knew. Now go on away and leave me. From what I've learned, the boy is irresponsible. And by your actions, you are making yourself an accessory after the fact. And you'll be indicted. You, you mean they may arrest me? Lock me up? I understand the boy keeps you in trouble all the time. 
And sooner or later, you're going to have to appeal to the authorities for relief. If you tell what you know now, the judge will sympathize with you, and he'll help you. Oh, Lord, please forgive me. I've wanted to talk, to tell the truth, but I'm afraid not of my flesh. I found him when he was a baby, a deserted child. He was marked. You understand what I mean? He was branded. A brand of Cain. He, he came home frightened and terrified after the murder and told me all about it. It seemed that on the way to the factory, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Oh, I believe you're playing me. I got an idea that you have it made up with him. So you'd have an excuse to go up there today. And there ain't nobody around but you and him. But, George, I tell you, I've had nothing to do with Mr. Brisbane. And I'm just going up there to get my money. Listen, kiddo, be sure you're telling me the truth. Because I'm waiting right here till you return. And if you ain't back by the time I think you ought to be, I'm coming up there and get you. Get you both. See? George, will you turn me loose? You hurt my arm. Now behave yourself. And wait here for me if you want to. I'll get my little money and come right down. Be sure you do. And I don't mean maybe. Oh, George, why are you acting this way? I've been in love with you for a long time. Come on, little one. Give me a kiss. He got lost in the place and couldn't find his way about for several minutes. During that time, he said he could hear Brisbane and the girl and it angered him beyond words. And he determined to kill her and Brisbane as soon as he found him. But when, when he finally got into the room where there was a light, Brisbane had left, and Myrtle was laying unconscious on the floor. But after what he had seen and heard, he didn't believe she was unconscious, only playing him. And so... So you did it, eh? Damn fix you. And she fell and hurt herself, but I don't know how badly she's hurt. No need pretending you don't hear me. Because I'm going to fix you anyhow. You go back there and bring her here and hurry. It was the boy. You won't hear from him again until he gets into new trouble. 
We'll take you to see the judge in the morning. Cheer up. Everything's going to be all right. Did you see that girl cross the way? Why, yes. Of course. Why? Well, that's the girl you've taken me to be for three years. Oh, Claudia. It can't be true. This is terrible. Why, you big bum, you can't pull that on me and get away with it. Oh, why, you... I wonder if you can ever forgive me, dear. There's nothing to forgive. You just mistook me for somebody else and... But there is, dear. I love you, dear. I loved you then. I love you now. And will always love you. My darling. You dirty, rotten f***er, you! Why you hit me like that? You dare hit me like that? wedding present to you, dear, will be a new home far removed from the catbird's nest. <laughs> 